right, so here we are, the last lecture on electrochemistry. Right now we're going to talk about Poubé diagrams. And as you'll find out, these diagrams um, take into account the idea of non-standard conditions, electrochemistry, and some of the acid-base properties of materials. So it's kind of uh, the overall the overall look at everything that we have learned so far. All right, so Poubé was actually a scientist, uh, uh, a French scientist, Marcel Poubé, and the idea that he was interested in was addressing how corrosion takes place and how you can prevent it. You know, like here you have a, a very corroded ship, you know, that has been exposed to the elements. And also, you know, the ideas of, um, of chemistry that can explain corrosion is what he was interested in. Ultimately, this has to do with electrochemistry and the whole idea of what happens to the elements from the point of view of not just the electrical potential, but also the pH uh, have uh, a lot of, a lot of um, emphasis on environmental science you know, whether it is, you know, to, you know, keep radioactive waste in containers that are not going to, like, get destroyed over time, uh, but also, you know, not to accidentally, you know, kill aquatic life and ecosystems. So, this has a lot of implications. And we're going to start first by talking about water, because everything that we generally tend to play with, at least in this particular course, involves water as your solvent. Okay, so for water and oxygen to be most exact, um, we have the following electro reduction diagram, right? O2 can be reduced to water, water can be reduced to H2. And so we're going to see how those values get affected when the pH changes from 0 to 14. Alright, and the idea is that we're going to keep the values of 1.23 and 0 as reference values. Alright, here we go. Going from O2 to water, O2 is the reactant, water is the product. Uh, you basically balance this half redox reaction. You have two oxygens, so you need two waters. That gives you four protons, so you add four H pluses on the left side, and the overall charge on the left side is four plus, whereas the charge is neutral on the right side, so you add four electrons on the left side to account for that. This is the balance half redox reaction for that process. And down here, going from water to H2, I'm going to keep it simple and say, well, the H2 is dissociating into H pluses. So each one of those H pluses acquires an electron. They combine together and they form H2. Each one of these equations has a nursed relationship associated with it. And for the first equation, the only things that really make it into the equation are your O2 gas and your H plus. AQ substance, right? The liquid water doesn't make into the expression, so you only have the reactants here. And notice that because of the coefficient of H plus, we're raising H plus to the fourth power. Now, in terms of electrons, the number of electrons is four. You can see that directly from the half redox reaction. Uh, but you could also do the same thing for the second process. Uh, H2 makes it into the equilibrium expression, and so that's H plus raised to the second power. So we're going to make this kind of simple, and we're going to assume that anything else other than H plus is going to have a concentration of one molar. In other words, it's going to be present in standard conditions. And so that means that the H2 concentration and the O2 concentrations are basically just one. So this simplifies to the following picture. For the first process, we're dealing with four electrons. The second process, we're dealing with two electrons. So what is happening is that the log of 1 over H plus is the, is the same thing as saying negative log of H plus, which in itself is the same thing as saying pH. So if you bring the negative 4 exponent to the front, 4 and 4 will cancel out, and you'll end up with negative log of H plus. If you bring the negative 2 exponent out of the log, the 2s will cancel out, you'll end up with negative log of H plus, which is once again pH. So for both instances, you end up getting 1.23 or 0, 0.00, the original E0 potential of the half reaction, uh, minus 0 0.0592 times the pH. And simply stated, this is nothing more than a line that starts at 1.23 and works its way 
all the way to pH of 14. So if you actually just plug in 14 for the pH, carry on that multiplication and subtract it from the initial value, that tells you where you're going to end up here. And technically speaking, this upper line and the lower line, they represent the level of stability of water from the point of view of the potential. So if you have a substance that has a potential that lies somewhere between these two lines along the pH scale, then you have a stable species that will not be reacting with water. Now, generally speaking and practically speaking, there is a kinetic factor that gets involved when dealing with water because water has to acquire four electrons or has to lose four electrons uh, in the process of an oxidation or it has to accept two electrons in the process of a reduction and in the process it also has to lose a bunch of protons so that takes in a lot of um, accommodation it, it definitely requires that the water molecule reorganize itself in a huge way and because of that huge potential activation energy of reestablishing new parameters for everything there's an actual over potential of plus or minus 0.6 volts. So even though this is the upper limit and the lower limit of water, in reality, you have a kinetic stability region, which allows you to have some species that are slightly a little bit higher in potential than the upper limit of water and still be stable, at least to some degree. Um, and the same thing on the lower limit, you could have 0.6 volts of under potential, at which case the species are stable to some, you know, period, for some period of time within water. All right, now, we've seen what's going on with water, but let's take a look at an element like europium. Europium has two oxidation states, three plus and two plus. All right, so you could undergo a reduction from the three plus state to the two plus state, or you could go a reduction from the two plus state to the zero state. But for europium three, there's an additional factor that needs to be taken into account. And it is the fact that europium three under acidic conditions uh, is present as the naked ion, but at basic conditions, you actually form europium hydroxide precipitate. So we're going to have to consider these two states for europium 3 in particular. Now, the boundary right here for europium 3 and 2, we're going to input that in there. And the idea pretty much is this. We're going to see how the pH affects the reaction. And the reaction will be affected so long as there is H plus present in our um, equations in our nurse equation so looking at European 3 to European 2 if we are under a pH below 7 right so we're in acidic conditions you are simply dealing with European 3 as the oxidative species and European 2 will be your final product so your equation is simply European 3 acquires an electron to become European 2 and since there are no electrons excuse me since there are no protons present in that reaction simply put changing the pH will not affect the potential or the value of the potential so what that ultimately means for us is that the potential from 0 to 7 in terms of the pH will not change it will remain at negative 0.35 however by the time we hit basic pHs the identity of European 3 is no longer European 3 plus, but rather European 3 hydroxide. So your new balanced equation becomes the following. European 3 hydroxide is your reactant. European 2 plus is your product. And in order to balance this equation, yes, you do acquire one electron, but now you're going to have to add three protons to the left side and three waters to the right side for this equation to actually work out. All right, now. Because there are protons present in the half redox reaction of European 3 hydroxide, here the Nernst equation will have H plus present in it, and as a result, changes in pHs will actually affect the value of the potential. So, assuming that all the concentrations other than H plus are equal to 1, means that the European concentration is regarded as just 1. In the equations, we're dealing with only one electron, so n equals 1. And by the way, this is h plus to the third power, you know. Uh, but if you bring the third power outside and multiply it by 0 0.0592, you end up getting 0 0.178, right? So this looks a little bit more simplistic. And the log of 1 over h plus is the same thing as negative log of h plus. So that's literally your pH. So you have negative 0.35 minus 0 0.178 
times the pH. And right now, all you have to do is simply plug in pH 14, which will be the um, the boundary on the rightmost portion of the pH scale. So plug in 14 into this equation, subtract it from negative 35, 0.35, and you'll find out that the value of the potential is now down to negative 2.84. So this kind of provides you with an overall picture of what's happening to europium, incorporating the acid-base chemistry in association with europium-3. Now, if you actually place the species right what, into the corresponding regions, what this tells you is that above on the upper left portion of the graph, that's where European 3 plus AQ will coexist. In the upper portion, but the right portion of it, right, so past pH 7, that's where European 3 hydroxide will coexist. And below the pink boundaries, that's where European 2 plus exists. Now, if we superimpose the window for stability of water, what we can see is that we have European 3 being stable within the region for water, European 3 hydroxide, same idea. European 2 barely makes any uh, overlap with water, right? And there's te technically a very small window where European 2 will be stable. So technically speaking, European 2, we don't consider it to be stable in water. Most likely than not, if you do have it in water, it will react with that over time. But this whole picture now gives you the entire uh, premise of what europium is going to be doing in terms of its chemistry by looking at the change in potentials and the changes in the identity of the species as the pH changes. All right, we're going to do one more example, but I'm going to save this example for the next video.